The market internal telegraphed it to us what the S&P 500 was going to do last week. Now, they are telling us to get ready for the next move. The up-down volume ratio went to a level we haven't seen for quite some time. So what is it telling us? In this video, we'll look at the up-down volume ratio and other market internals to see what they are telling us about the next possible move for the S&P 500. For those that are unfamiliar with what are market internals or looking for a refresher on about the market internal, I suggest that you go and check out this video that I put out explaining what the market internals are and how to interpret them. And I will put the link in the description below so you could go and watch that video after you finish watching this video. Now let's dive in on these uh, market sentiment and also market internals. Starting with the intraday chart here, then we go and look at the uh, daily uh, chart on various uh, market internal and the sentiment. Now looking at Friday's price action, you see the S&P 500 gap down and basically been you know, sold off throughout the day and kind of level off in the afternoon. But notice the VIX, that's what the uh, what we call the fear factor. Okay, the VIX been hovering around the 17 level. It did get up to the 19 level throughout the session here, like here early in the uh, mid-morning and also early afternoon here. Now, usually when the VIX is uh, up above near the 20 level, then we see the market participant are getting a little bit cautious and a little bit fearful. And when they get above, when the VIX is above the 20 level and inside its zone here between 20 and 30, then the market participant often fearful and they are risk off. And then when we get above the 30, then they're totally bearish, right? Now, also the other thing is we'll look uh, later on in the uh, the daily uh, sentiment chart that we see that the VIX been hovering near the uh, low teen level below the 15. And those are the levels that the market participant feel you know, fearless or complacent and they are more inclined to be risk on, right? So right now we're basically looking at the market uh, with the market participant sort of in a cautious mode here, sitting at 17.4 on the VIX. And also the put call ratio. The put call ratio is once you get above this uh, 0.75 to 1, then uh, we're saying this, uh, you know, the market participant, participant is buying put to hedge the position. And when you get over 1, then they're basically getting really bearish and they start betting on the downside and buying put to uh, bet on the market going further down. So right now it is sitting at 0.78 level. So just inside of this head zone. And right now the uh, market participant is kind of being cautious, right? And it, uh, you know, uh, reflect that on the VIX as well. Now, looking at the uh, new high, new low, we see that uh, under tremendous selling pressure on Friday, we only saw five more stock make new 52 week low than the number of stock make 52 week high. So that is more like a neutral. Now we did see that it came off from this early in the morning that there were 32 stock, almost 32 more uh, stock uh, making new 52 week high than 52 week low. And then throughout the day, at the end of the session, the number of stock making new 52 week low outnumber the number of stock making new 52 week high. So you can say that there is a little bit turn into a little bit more bearish or cautious uh, you know, sentiment on the new high, new low at the end of the session. Now, looking at the up-down volume ratio, this is the uh, indicator that tells us how much buying and selling pressure the market is under. Uh, so right now, when we look in the morning here, when it opened, the up-down volume ratio is only minus 1.1. Now, when it is a minus number, then that implies the uh, down volume is greater than the up volume. And when it is positive number, it was, when this ratio is positive, that means the up volume is greater than the down volume. So when we see a minus 1.1, that tells us that there are more down volume than up volume, and the ratio is 1.121. Okay, so that's not too bad. It's kind of neutral, and we see that the S&P 500 is still coming down, but the up-down volume ratio did not really accelerate to the downside until in the afternoon near the close, the last uh, couple hours before the closing bell, we saw that the up-down volume start to go more negative. And at one point we see it is actually, you know, close to 19 to one in favor of the uh, down volume. So we see there are strong selling pressure in the afternoon. It's look like people just want to head out the door and don't want to take the risk of uh, you know whatever happened on a weekend over the weekend, especially with the uh, Middle East, uh, you know, possibility of starting World War Three, right? The thing is, I wanted to look to you is later on we could see what are some of the signs that these uh, internal is telling us and uh, what could possibly signaling us to be uh, prepared for the coming week. 
Now, also the other thing is on the uh, number of stock advancing versus number of stock declining. So once again, when it's negative, that means there are more stock declining in price than uh, stock advancing in price. And when it's positive, it's vice versa. So when we uh, look at the uh, early morning uh, opening, we did not see that much of negative, uh, so, uh, you know, on this internal here because we saw about, you know, minus 600. So there's only 600 more declining stock than uh, uh, advancing stock. But as the day progress into the afternoon, in the lunch hour, we see that start to accelerate on the downside. We are looking at over a thousand, close to 2,000 uh, more stock uh, falling in price than the, you know, the, uh, the number of stock advancing in price. Now, about 3,000 stock traded in the New York Stock Exchange every trading session. So when you see close to 2,000 more stock declining in price, that means there's 1,000 of the stock that is split between, you know, divided between the uh, advancing in price and declining in price. And if we make a rough estimate saying there are no stock that are unchanged in price, then that means that 1,000 stock, 500 of them, is advancing in price or advancing price and 500 of them or declining in price. So when we add that 500 on top of this 2,000, that's 2,500. So if we take 2,500 divided by 3,000, that's over 80% of the stock traded in the New York Stock Exchange on Friday or declined in price. So that is a massive broad participation of downside pressure on Friday. So these internal is telling us that a lot of market participants or taking precautionary uh, stands, you know, going into the weekend, and they basically exit out of the market. Don't want to face the, uh, uh, you know, the, the the risk of the possibility of whatever happened in the Middle East and escalated into a possibility of starting World War Three. Okay, so that's basically what the fear and the uh, you know the uh, the sell off was all about in my mind, based on these internals on Friday. Now, let's take a look at this sentiment chart on a daily basis here. You can see that, like I said earlier, you know, the VIX has been hovering down at this 12 level, between 12 and 15 level for quite a while now, right? ever since back in December, November time frame of last year. And then just recently, we saw it accelerated, start pushing up to the 16 and 17 level. And during the entry day on Friday, we actually saw it came up close to the 20 level. So right now, it's still sitting below the 20 level. That's where this song here that we're saying that the market participants are getting fearful and getting risk off. Right now, they are only being cautious and still, you know, risk on. It just might, might not be as, uh, you know, uh, with so much conviction on the risk on side, but they are, you know, still not completely uh, in a uh, fearful mode or a panic mode when it get up to above the 30 level, like when we see it uh, spike up into the 40 and the, uh, and the 50. Now, also the uh, put call ratio, you notice that you know, a couple of days before Friday, you know, like on Wednesday or so, we saw the fix. I mean, the put call ratio actually came up to uh, to the one level that telling us that there were a lot of put buying, you know, buying protection or betting on the market is going to go down further, which it did because if those people that bought the put here, they probably had made profit as the market came down and dipped down, you know, this flush on Friday. But notice the put call ratio came down on Friday as well, even on Thursday. Thursday, we got this little rally here, and also we're going to see the market internal to tell us this rally is a fake, right? But again, you know, just uh, looking at the put call ratio right now, we are seeing that the uh, uh, it's got a little bit of a hedging going on, but it's not betting on a bearish type of, like a lot of people thinking that the market is going to crash, World War II is going to start over the weekend, and the whole world is going to blow up, okay? So that is not what the market was telling us. Now, here's an interesting chart that I want you to pay attention to. This is the up-down volume ratio. Okay, that is telling you how much of a buying or selling pressure the market was under at a particular time. And notice I have drew a line here that is minus 10. So I'm basically using that as a, uh, a threshold. So anytime this uh, up-down volume ratio go below minus 10, then we're basically looking at uh, you know, a lot of selling pressure there. You know, you're getting more than 10 to 1 down volume versus uh, up volume. So here you see on Friday, it came down and it, uh, remember we saw it was as, lo as low as minus 19, but it closed at minus 13. And this right here, we are seeing uh, minus 12 or so. And this right here is minus 10. We notice that we saw this, uh, you know, sell off 
on these last two occasions. Okay, and it bounces back in the uh, following session. Okay, so are we going to see a bounce back on uh, the Friday se- from the Friday session in, on Monday? Because the sell-off is not like uh, you know uh, the, the market had made a top here and on a downtrend. You know, such as uh, you know, let me uh, go and show you these right here. See here, you see this right here, right? This uh, came down to uh, what is that? Minus eighteen. So we saw minus nineteen down here. But this one here closed at minus 18. But this is already on a downtrend, right? Making a lower, low, lower high. And it's in the middle of a downtrend and say likewise over here. But here again, you could look at the uh, divergence as well. I know kind of, <laughs> you know, swaying away from the point that I try to make here. But I get back to the main point. But I just want you to see that you're seeing a lower low on the uh, S&P 500. But the upbound volume ratio is actually making a higher low. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a sense of divergence in the market. That when you look at these internal, do not look at it on an absolute level, but you look at it based on the divergence between you know the uh, the internal and the reference uh, uh, instrument that you're looking at. And in this case, we're looking at the S and P 500. So you see that here, we basically could be just seeing a, a little bit of a pullback because last week in the video we were saying that yeah the market internal is telling us that we could see more pullback in the coming week and that's basically what we saw but there are no signs to tell us that this market have topped yet in matter of fact i'm going to reiterate and remind you why i still believe that we're going to see a uh, higher high on the s p 500 a new high on s p 500 but when we get to that point i will re- remind you uh, why i believe that way okay but for now you can see that the uh, you know up down volume ratio uh, is uh, coming down now these could be just a shakeout and uh, whoever want to get out they basically got shaken out they basically just get me out right i don't care what the price is i just want to get out in a normal situation when we are down at the uh, bottom of the market we call this capitulation okay but right here as we are climbing is still on a trending market we are not calling this a capitulation we're going to just say shakeout okay and that's basically it is a shakeout because hey you have to look at it this way. Every transaction involves a buyer and a seller. So somebody is buying it down here when it was being sold. On the coming week to see, is it indeed that we're going to see a little bit of a bounce? And that's basically the one I'm telling you, that based on these internal, we are looking at the possibility of a bounce for this coming week. And look at the daily advance decline. Right? We saw the advance decline also with the, uh, you know, the declining issue outnumbered the, the advancing issue by almost 2,000. Okay, that's 80 some odd percent, 80 plus percent of the stock traded on that particular trading session is traded with a loss. So you can see that once we saw this massive you know, market participation on downside, you know, we're going to see a little bit of a bounce coming back. Now, look at this Thursday here. Let me zoom this in here. See this Thursday here? We saw a massive rally on Thursday on the S&P 500, right? But look at the events decline. It's actually negative. It said there are 13 more stock declining in price than advanced, the number of stock advancing in price. Okay, and also the up down volume ratio was minus 1.1. So there were more down volume than up volume. So this kind of also give us a clue to say, hey, beware, this is a fake rally here and we could get a little dump in the next day or two. And indeed we got that on Friday. And what was the catalyst? Well, the catalyst was the Middle East with the Iran retaliation of Israel. And that's been telegraphed throughout the week, right? It's just a matter of when it's going to happen and how big it's going to happen and what's the end game. And it turned out the end game, somebody already got the memo early that it won't be a start of World War III. And now let's take a look at the number of new high and number of new low in the New York Stock Exchange. Although on Friday we saw there were actually five more stocks making new 52-week low than 52-week high. But the key thing to keep in mind is that look at the level the number of stocks that be making new 52-week low is pretty much constant, right? Not much of a movement up here. Although we saw the number of stocks making new high came down. And when we have pullback, that's the uh, expectation, right? We don't expect the new high to continue to push, uh, you know, increase while the uh, market is pulling back. So again, this is only, a, this could be a sign that this is a pullback, not a uh, market crash coming down, you know, that sort of thing that a lot of people was talking about that it's going to come down and have this major correction, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, we probably could see 5% correction. That's not, you know, surprising or astonishing, right, after a humongous run up here. So, but even that 5% is not that much, you know, in a relative sense. 
And here, looking at the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line, we see that the AD line also came down a bit, likewise with the S&P 500, but we are not seeing a negative divergence. In other words, that the uh, AD line came down much more than the uh, S&P 500, or the S&P 500 actually went up while the uh, uh, cumulative AD line went down. So if, it, if that's the case, that that mean that mean there are more stock going down while the S&P 500 is actually going up. Now, if we look at the Nasdaq market, looking at the Nasdaq 100, it didn't really do that much of damage on Friday, right? You know, look at the gain on Thursday. But we did see a massive, uh, you know, participation on the downside regarding to the advanced decline. We saw over 2,200 more uh, declining issue than advancing issue on Friday. And even on Wednesday, we saw over 2,300 more declining stock than advancing stock. And the uh, up-down volume ratio is somewhere around minus 5. So basically 5 to 1 in favor of the down volume. And looking at the new high, new low, we noticed that the uh, number of stock making a new 52-week low is still uh, you know, up at the uh, you know, 200 uh, area, while the uh, number of stock of uh, making new high came down to double digit. And we see that the number of stock, uh, the 52-week uh, uh, high versus 52-week low got negative. That means there are more stock uh, making new 52-week low than 52-week high. And we see that uh, kind of increasing a little bit. So we are seeing internally a little bit more softness in the NASDAQ. But again, you know, the NASDAQ 100 is being held up mostly by the FANG stock or the Magnificent 7 or the NVIDIA, whatever you want to call them. Okay, but uh, we, are, you know, we, we did have a massive uh, gain from uh, Apple on Fridays that's kind of holding up the NASDAQ 100 and also the S&P 500 to a certain degree on Friday. And here on the NASDAQ cumulative AD line, we've been watching this negative divergence for quite a while and also came down a little bit more. So we just increased the uh, negative divergence. And uh, you know, when this market uh, turned uh, south, we could expect that there will be a little bit more uh, you know, uh, uh, correction in terms of you know, the velocity and the volatility from the NASDAQ market just based on this uh, cumulative AD line. I hope you uh, get a sense of what these market internals and the market sentiment present us with the uh, picture, the, uh, the underneath picture of the internal strength of the market or the weakness of the market. So again, uh, if you are unfamiliar with these indicators, these are market-generated information. Okay? It's not derived by some magical formula, take an average of an average and that kind of stuff. So be sure to go and watch this video, and I have the link in the description below. So watch that. And if you have any question about the market internal, post the question on the comment section and I will try to answer them as quickly as possible and as clearly as I can. Let's take a look at the yield curve. The first one we're gonna look at is the 10 year versus two year. You can see that it is still inverted and sitting at minus 0.375%. And this one here is the 10 year versus three month. It came up a little bit, you know, continue to come up, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting at minus one point, uh, you know, one or so below that. And uh, right now we are sitting at minus 0.855, but in regardless, it is still inverted. So what this is still telling us is that we could still see a recession. And looking at the 10 year yield, we see the 10 year yield came back up to four and a half percent now. It was a little bit higher, almost 4.6. Remember when we were down here at this 4.3, I was tell telling uh, you that uh, I still be uh, watching for the possibility to come back up to this 5% area and might even uh, come up to this 5.3 before this cycle is uh, coming to an end. Although, you know, a lot of people at that time was looking for seven rate cut in 2024, then we went to uh, three rate cut, and now they are questioning that will we even get a rate cut this year, or we might even get a rate hike in uh, 2024. So, hey, your guess is as good as mine, but I'm not uh, being that uh, uh, such a big dreamer that we're going to see seven rate cut. I'd be surprised we'll get one, so, uh, but we might just for political effect for the election. So we'll see, but I think uh, you know, Jay Powell is going to be uh, standing firm on his uh, policy of higher for longer. And here looking at the U.S. dollar, we see the U.S. dollar came back up and uh, got above this 106 level. Remember, we're talking about this 105.80 level here come up uh, last Friday and peak above this 106 now. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it uh, maybe bounce around a little bit here and then make a push to this 107. So we'll see because I think the dollar is going to continue to gather strength and continue to push higher as the uh, 
sentiment that there are no way cuts for 2024. And here's the dollar future. Remember, we we're saying that as long as it holds about this uh, composite point of control, we're basically looking for this uh, dollar future to come up to this 105.80 area. And right now it is smack against it. So I'm still looking for the dollar to uh, move above this level and push us up to this 107 and even possibly get up to this 107.89 or 108 area. And for crude oil, we see uh, crude oil came uh, and pushed up above this 86 level here. So right now it's setting up this uh, 87 area. Now what I want you to see is actually this right here. Yeah, let me zoom this in. See on this Friday candle here, you see that it made a massive move up to this uh, 87, 88 area. And then it reversed and came back down and closed where near where it opened. So this also tell you that a lot of people was betting something is going to uh, you know, uh, happen in the Middle East that will cause the oil price to shoot up. But then as the day progresses, uh, you know, the market got a sense that, hey, it's not going to turn out to be what a lot of people think it's going to be. So then they uh, sold the oil off because, you know, the, uh, the uh, whatever happened in the Middle East might not cause the oil price to explode. Now, I still believe that we will get a higher price on uh, crude oil. I don't believe that it is the top here yet because I'm still looking for the possibility of coming back up to this 94 and even to the century mark before this cycle is over. But for now, you know, this little bit of a, you know, euphoria here or the uh, fear trade uh, probably is played out. And we're probably going to be a chop around a little bit between this uh, 84 and a half and 86 and a half. And then, uh, you know, kind of consolidate a little bit and then make another push up. And looking at silver, you could also see the uh, spikes, uh, you know, up on uh, silver and then reverse itself. But uh, I believe, you know, silver still got a little bit more room to run. And we could see uh, a little bit higher prices here. There's this uh, 30 level here that it will uh, try to uh, come up and uh, take this uh, 30 level out, 30, uh, 33. Okay, so I'd be uh, watching silver, you know, consolidate a little bit, you know, maybe uh, get back into this balance area and bounce around and then make another push. And you can see the same thing with gold, right? Gold surge up, you know, to uh, this uh, 2450 area and then uh, sold off and came back down and it closed at uh, 2374, this level down here. Now, I am still looking for gold to move higher. So it's just a matter of time, right? Because we have this major move. And if I uh, just zoom this in here. So, so this is the uh, consolidation or the balance area that it broke out uh, from. And uh, you see that it just uh, have this humongous surge. Once it broke out, did a little bit of a consolidation here and then uh, push up to this 80% uh, major move and got above that on Friday, but it came back in. So right now, I'm still looking at this 100% move, this major move. If it's a 100%, that'd be close to 2,500. And I wouldn't be surprised once we get over this 2,450. And the talking head will be uh, talking about 2,500. And some crazy guy probably even talk about 3,000. So as you can see from the crude oil, the uh, precious metal is all kind of telling us that, uh, hey, that Friday sell-off is nothing to fear, other than maybe a little bit of a shakeout in a uh, pullback so uh, we could see uh, the market bounce back a little bit this coming week now let's take a look at some of the sector here first starting off with the 11 sector in the s p 500 now down here on this curve here this is the relative strength uh, line here and it is plotting the uh, ratio of the underlying against the s p 500 so with this uh, going down then that means uh, the underlying is uh, underperformed relative to the s p 500 and vice versa, if it's going up, then the underlying is outperformed the S&P 500 in terms of the percentage. And looking at the XLK, the technology sector, we could see that the, uh, uh, you know, right now it's sitting right at this high volume node here. Okay? And I have this uh, map off on a high and a low in this balance area. Right? So uh, if uh, XLK could uh, bounce back above this high volume node, then we could see price to try to get back up to the uh, top or try to get up to this high here. Now, if price is unable to uh, get back above this high volume node and remain below it, then we could look for price to try to work itself down toward this, uh, you know, the, uh, the bottom edge of this, uh, what we call the uh, distribution or the balance area here, the 196 and a half. And here we are looking at the healthcare sector and you can see the healthcare sector being quite weak, known as the, uh, 
you know, decline in this line here, the relative strength line here. So you can see it is quite weak. It broke this balance area and now it's coming into this balance area. So we'll be surprised to see the price continue to come down toward this 137.42 area before we see a little bit of a bounce and try to bounce back up to this 147.76. Now, if it could get above this 141.76, then we could see it maybe try to come back up and test these uh, support turn into resistance here at this 144.37. But for right now, I'd be more inclined to look for lower prices than uh, you know, going back up and uh, get above this 141.76. And look at the consumer discretionary. The consumer discretionary is also showing a little bit of an underperformance as well. You see that it's been uh, coming down and right now getting a little bit of a bounce uh, at the uh, lower end of this balance area. So if we could hold this level here, this one, uh, 76 and a half or so, then we could see it maybe come back up to this high volume node somewhere around this 180 and see what it'd be able to penetrate and move above that 180 and try to come back up toward this high here at 185.29. But my uh, sense is that it probably will not be able to get back above this 180. It might come up and test it and then push it back down to this 176.41. Because I think the consumer is getting a little bit uh, out of money right now. And I think the uh, credit card debt is getting too high that believe that they are running out of resources to uh, keep spending. So I'd be uh, watching the uh, consumer discretionary to move lower and possibly break this, uh, uh, this area here, this 176 and a half, and come into this balance area. And we're basically looking at this level here, 170. The financial was uh, quite strong a couple of weeks ago, you know, but right now it seems like it, all the sign is got quite weak. You notice the uh, relative strength is really coming down and uh, come, came down pretty quickly. So right now we're basically uh, looking at to see if we'll be able to hold this $40 level here. And if it doesn't, then we'd be uh, looking at the possibility for this thing to come down to this 3882. Now we did see some earnings that came out from JP Morgan, Wells Fargo City. And we're going to see more of these financial earnings from um, Goldman Sachs, I believe, uh, Morgan Stanley. I'm not sure. Is it DFA? It's also scheduled this week or not. So watch what those earnings. I think, uh, you know, they were betting on lower interest rate cut and that kind of stuff. But if the interest rate is going to stay high for longer, then I think the uh, bank might have to sort it out a little bit longer. News and communication sector, it uh, held up pretty good, right? You know, it's uh, still holding up at this uh, 81 area. And didn't really come down that much, you know, from 82 and a quarter to 81 last week or so. So, so it's not too bad. And uh, we could see a little bit of a bounce back up, uh, depending on how Meta and uh, Google, uh, those uh, couple of stock do. And uh, if they could hold on, then, uh, you know, it could push the thing up to uh, take out this high. But if it break this 81, then I'd be uh, looking for the possibility for this thing to move down to 78. So just keep an eye on Google and Meta. And for the industrial, the industrial also saw some relative weakness here in terms of the, uh, you know, relative to the S&P 500. Uh, but in terms of the decline, it doesn't look as bad, right? Because right now it is still looking to seems to be, uh, you know, trying to uh, fill in this low volume area here. You know, so it make this, uh, you know, uh, this balance area to uh, be a little bit wider. Okay, so we could see the industrial probably chop around between this uh, 124.50 and 122 level for a while. And if we could get back above this 124.50, then we probably could see this high to get uh, uh, tested. But if it uh, dip below this 122, then we could see it uh, probably uh, try to migrate down to this 119.70 area. And looking at the stable, the stable really sold off. And uh, you know we did see a little bit of a weakness on the performance. These are a little bit more of a defensive type of a stock doing uh, you know, inflation every time. Okay, so right now, if this thing is coming down, so is it telling us that something changing? I think uh, people just holding back, uh, just could not uh, afford to even, uh, you know, buy the everyday's uh, necessity. So I think, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, facing tough time. Uh, right now, the uh, stable is down here, you know, uh, below this high volume low here, below this 7440. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it come down to this 72. 50 year area before we see a little bit of a bounce. So again, you know, it is uh, still pretty weak. And if it come up, then I'd be uh, watching this 7441 uh, for uh, potential resistance. 
And here you can see the energy sector really sold off on uh, Friday. Right? It came up and it got a reversal and, uh, you know, I came up to uh, 98, almost 99, 90, almost 99 level and then sold back down to, to 96 area, right? So that's uh, uh, quite a reversal. So that kind of gives you some idea of what the market is thinking about the uh, oil prices. You know, a lot of people were betting that it was going to escalate you know, just explode upward because of the escalation, uh, potential of escalation in the uh, uh, Middle East. But as it turned out that, uh, hey, the market has already know something that we didn't know, or a lot of people doesn't know, right? And, uh, you know, they uh, sold it off. And right now it's sitting at this 96 area. So we'll see what I hold in 96, it will come down and shake a little bit more people off here to get down to this 93.69. Because I think the, uh, the oil price will continue to move up and here's the real estate. So right now you see that it broke this, uh, you know, this balance area that I have here. Okay? And I have a major move that 80% of this major move will bring down to somewhere around 35 and a half. So right now it broke this, uh, uh, you know, this balance area. And uh, it broke down from this 37.63. So right now we could see a little bit of a back test before it uh, continue to push lower. And here we got a little bit of a low volume zone. And that's basically this gap here, somewhere near the uh, 36, uh, you know, 75, 36, 60 area. So we could see a little bit of a chop here and then uh, push it down to somewhere around this 36. And then who knows? We see uh, once it gets close to that, then a lot of these technical will become in play. And this 80% major move could be in play and that would push it down to that uh, 3550. And here's the material sector. So you can see the material sector is also kind of weak. So maybe it's not too many uh, building uh, stuff coming along. It's uh, broken down below this 9080. Right now, we're basically looking at the possibility of coming down to this 89 level to see what it be able to get a balance off of that. So uh, that's basically what I'm watching here on the uh, material is the uh, 89. And here for the utility, the utility also came down a bit. That's uh, you know kind of interesting, right? Because usually uh, utility will go up if it anticipates lower rate. And it will uh, come down if uh, it anticipates higher rate. So right now I'm looking for the possibility to come down to this 63.38, so 63.40, 63.50, this high volume zone here. Okay, so if we uh, then maybe we could see a little bit of a bounce, but eventually if the rate keep higher or longer, uh, then we probably will see utility work itself back down for this low here in this area here. So that would be uh, below. 60, somewhere around 59 and a half. I mean, that's a long way to go. So uh, we're still going to be uh, watching this level here first to see would it be able to hold support here or would it uh, be able to break above this 65 area and push this back up. Now let's take a look at some other key sectors that are not in the uh, S&P 500 11 sector category. The first one is the semiconductor. We see the semiconductors as been chopping in this zone here, this uh, 229 and a quarter and 218 and a quarter for quite a while now. So I'm basically looking at this uh, 218.29 here, see what it break this level. And if it does, then I'm looking for this thing to come down to this 212 area and possibly get down to this, uh, you know, this 80% major move okay, on this, uh, you know, consolidation of balance area down here at 209.50. And that will bring it down to this trend line here, you can see, you know, if you're looking at trend line, there's a uh, ascending uh, potential supporting trend line here that might be a uh, bounce here. Now here's the home builder uh, sector here. You see that it's uh, a little bit weak relative uh, to the S&P 500 recently. And we see the price uh, book below this high volume node here. So it came down and, uh, you know, get into this area here. Now book below this high volume node at 105. So I'd be uh, looking at the possibility for the price to work itself down to this 101 area and see what if get a uh, little bit of a bounce back and try to, uh, you know, back test this high volume node before it pushes down to the next zone here, right? This is the uh, next balance area that I'm looking at for the, uh, for the next balance. So if it come down here, we could see right here, or you could also move it up here, but basically, you know, somewhere in this area here, then we probably see price to get top around and maybe uh, try to consolidate in this, uh, you know, 100, between 100 and uh, 91. And here's the uh, retail sector. 
you see the retail sector is quite soft here, right? Very weak. Looking at these level, right? You see this 74 got broken down, this low volume now. It's basically broken to this uh, balance area. And now it is getting into this balance area. So I wouldn't be surprised that it come to here and break to this low volume zone somewhere around, uh, you know, the uh, 71 and a half or so. And work itself down to this 70 area. And maybe we get a little bit of a bound. Come back up, back test that 71 and a half, and then push us down again to this uh, 67 and change. You know, come down to this area here. So basically, auction down for the uh, near the bottom of this uh, balance area, this distribution. And also, the biotech kind of got sold off as well. So you can see the uh, speculation uh, is really uh, dampened out recently on these biotech stuff. So once it broke this high volume, no, you can see that it just came down to this 133 and a half right now sitting at this 129 and a half so again we'll see what it be able to get a bounce come back up to this 133 and a half and then push us down into this gap here this low volume zone somewhere around this 126 and here looking at TLT the long-term bond we see that it broke down from this 9229 and came down close to this 8925 this low volume zone here that we're talking about last week and also uh, clear, you know, getting near this 80% uh, major move off of this uh, balance area down here, 88.69. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this, you know, come back down and test this 89 and a quarter again and breaks it and then start moving down toward this 100% major move down to this uh, 87.71 area. Unless some Fed had come out and say, yeah, it's going to cut rate next month, but I doubt that will happen. So those are the sector. I hope you find it uh, informative to tell you which sector is showing some weakness and strength and where to focus if you are talk, looking for longs and shorts. So if you have any comments, be sure to post them in the comment section below. And if you like this video and find it useful, be sure to smash that thumbs up and give it a like. And if you are not a subscriber to this channel, click the subscribe and support this channel by subscribing. Now let's go and take a look at the ETF for the indexes. Now, before we take a look at the ETF for the uh, individual index, a uh, brief recap on what the performance were for these indexes. And you see the composite, the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100 were the uh, best performer last week, only uh, lost about half a percent. The S&P 500 lost one and a half percent for the week. The Dow Jones Industrial, two and a third percent. And the Dow Jones Transportation, a little bit over two and a half percent. Likewise, for the New York Stock Exchange composite, the Russell 2000 was the uh, worst performer. It lost almost 3%. And looking at the ETF for the indexes, we see that the Q lost half a percent. The SPY lost uh, almost 1.5%. The Diamond lost 2.3%. And the uh, IWM lost 2.8%. Uh, now let's take a look at the Diamond, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial uh, ETF here. See that last week it broke through this balance area and actually close below the uh, lower range of the uh, expected move. And looking at what the market is pricing in for the coming week, it is pricing in the upper range uh, between 387 and 386.60, and the uh, lower range between 373.10 and 371. So you can see that right now it is in this range here, and that is between this balance area and also this balance area. So I wouldn't be surprised that we will see a little bit of a more chop here to try to fill out this uh, low area, low volume area, and increase this balance area into a uh, one uh, larger balance area. These two uh, distribution combine them into one. So I'd be uh, watching for a little bit of a bounce, you know, come up here in 382 and maybe get up to this high volume now and then get a little rejection and come back down here. So, and uh, maybe at the latter part of the week, it will continue to move back down. And you see the market is actually pricing in the uh, lower boundary of this uh, balance area. But of course, it's also uh, balancing it to come back in to this uh, upper uh, distribution. And if it does come up to this upper distribution, then we could see a uh, what we call a look below and fail. And we could see the diamond come back up to this 392.84 in the coming week or the following week. And looking at the SPY, you see the SPY came into this low range and then popped back out and closed just above that on OPEX. And it is, uh, you know, breaking down from this balance area 
So I wouldn't be surprised that eventually it will come back down and test this low here, this 505 area. But for now, I do expect it to come back in and possibly do a little bit of a look below and fail type of move and work itself back up toward this 524. Okay? Because uh, later on, I'm going to show you the market profile chart and show you why I believe this high will be uh, get taken out. Let's take a look at what the uh, market is pricing in for the coming week. So we see the market is pricing in the upper range somewhere between 521.30 and 520.70. And the uh, lower range is between 501.50 and 498.50. So it is pricing in to uh, break this low volume low. Uh, in other words, um, you know, work itself below this uh, balance area and get into this balance area. And that's on the downside. Now for the upside is uh, basically come back in and try to backtest this trend line here. I do anticipate that we're gonna get a little bit of a bounce, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the uh, SPY to come back into this balance area and work itself up toward this uh, upper end of the uh, you know uh, upper range of the weekly expected move. And for the Q, last week the Q held up relatively well, and that mainly due to Apple. You know, it didn't come down like the uh, you know the SPY and the uh, Diamond. Uh, you know, they both came down into the lower range and the diamond actually closed below it right but uh, you notice that the q is actually still in the middle of this balance area here so i wouldn't be surprised that we could see the q continue to push up into this uh, 446 area in the coming week and here's what the market is pricing in 448.70 and 447.30 on the upper range and 429.20 and 426 on the lower range so once again if uh, you know, the uh, price for the queue is continuing to push up, then we could see that the upper range could be in play here as it come up to this upper range. And here's the IWM. The IWM came down and closed inside of this lower range here. So remember we we're talking about this thing could be a uh, look above and fail and try to work itself down toward this 190 area. So we could see a little bit of a bounce on the IWM in the coming week, but I think after the initial bounce, the bounce we could see a resumption of the uh, downward move to come back down to this 190 area. And here's what the market is pricing in for the coming week. The upper range is between 204.80 and 203.60. And the lower range is between 193.80 and 192.30. So we could see a bounce come up to the upper range, top around, and then come back down. Now let's take a look at this ES uh, market profile chart. And let me, uh, we iterate why I believe that the S&P 500 will likely see another all-time high. And that is mainly because of this poor high here from the ES in the market profile that is still need to get resolved. And this poor high is basically the all-time high. So when the ES come up and resolve this poor high, then most likely the S&P 500 will also come up and put in a new all-time high. In addition to that, there is a uh, Globex all-time high that is slightly above this level as well, which I don't have it on this chart. So that, again, another piece of the puzzle that indicates that there's a good possibility for the S&P 500 to come up and put in another all-time high. Now, when it come down, you know, much more, you know, uh, a correction before it come back up to this new high, well, anything is possible. We don't know what the market, uh, how the market's going to come up and put in a new all-time high. We just know that based on the information that is uh, telling us that we should totally get prepared for the possibility for that all-time high. Now, the reason why I say it's a possibility, well, nothing is guaranteed, right? Although in the past, it always seems to have shown that whenever we see a poor high that is in the all-time high territory, you have to come up and resolve and end this auction by uh, resolving this poor high. Or on the Globex market, we see a all-time high then it has to come up and take out that all-time high in the global section to make it official in the record book to say that it made an all-time high. We cannot have a global section uh, sitting there with an all-time high. We need to have an RTH section sitting there with an all-time high. Okay, and that's what made me believe that we see we will likely see a new all-time high for the S&P 500. Now, if you'd like to see more of the uh, uh, detailed analysis on a daily basis for the ES and also for the SPY, be sure to go check out my daily trade plan that I publish on a daily basis in my uh, Substack page. And the link to that page is smtraderca.substack.com. Go check it out and you also find some additional content that I posted based on you know, some of the trade that I took uh, 
you know, illustrate how I trade various level and the trade setup that I've used. So thank you for watching and be sure to smash that thumbs up and also subscribe to support the channel.